camera and I'm going to be teaching you how to make this fun little beaded tassel finial holder today. So um, stay tuned and here are the supplies we are going to need to make this one of a kind. Lovely. Hi guys. Okay, so the supplies we're going to need for this craft today is an assortment of ribbons. Whatever width and color you want to work with. I have some scraps here that I'm going to use up and I've decided to work in mostly creams and blacks, a little bit of kind of a brownish gold color. So I just have an assortment of ribbons here and I have a thin one here. Different textures, different thicknesses, whatever you think will look good, it's totally up to you. And then I also have a piece of trim. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I think it was in the upholstery department, kind of, you know, where pillow trims would be. It comes on a big yard. I just got, I think, the smallest cutoff they could give me. Um, and you only need this much, but get more because you'll want to make more of these. So just a little piece of trim. You need a teeny tiny little clay pot. I don't know what size this is. I wish I did. Uh, I want to guess maybe it's an inch and a half, two inches across maybe, but um, as long as it's small, the size, there's a little bit of fluctuation in this. And I already painted it white just to save time for this, so you don't have to watch paint dry. I think you can all figure out how to do that. And then we're going to put a little bird on the particular one that I'm doing. There's different attachments. This is ceramic. Um, you can get these at Michael's, at Hobby Lobby. They're usually in the spring and summer department. But you could put anything on top. You can put a Christmas thing, you could put a pumpkin on, whatever you choose for this to be. So um, in this particular case, I decided to do a bird. I'm going to kind of stay with the whites and blacks. And then I just have a little bit of twine here and some beads for our top, our, the top of our tassel and a scissors to cut the ribbon. I have my glue gun plugged in over there and um, a little bit of the E6000 glue, which will make um, which will make it permanent. Usually when I do crafts, I like to put this on because I know it's gonna hold in any kind of weather. It's gonna um, last forever once it dries. But I also will give it a dab of glue from my hot glue gun uh, just to get an instant stick on it so I don't have to sit and hold it until this cures. So, and look at you guys, I just found these neat little baby ones which I'm gonna give a try because when I get the big tube at Oz dries out on me before I get about halfway through it. So um, I'm gonna try the little ones today. And you can decide how you wanna hang this once you see it done. Um, you can hang it from a piece of driftwood, something like this, if you just wanna make it be its own decoration, or you can hang it from a, a ceiling fan, a lampshade, hang it in your window, hang it from a suction cup, uh, your rear view mirror, whatever you want to do with these. So that's going to be completely up to you. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut some ribbon. Just set this aside for a minute. And again, it's whatever ribbon you like. Just be creative. Um, and just depending how long you want this to be too. I'm going to probably do mine about this long. So I'm gonna go around a couple times just to get different lengths. And make sure you always have a good uh, scissors for your ribbon. So we have this, and I'm just gonna start laying them out, similar to how you make those messy bows if you're familiar with those. And same thing with this. It's just a little faster if you double your ribbon. And they don't all have to be the same length. If you want them the same length, go for it. Uh, not necessary though. We're kind of doing this just messy. So this one will be kind of close, but a little different. And that one's gone. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this kind of goldish brownish um, antique looking ribbon in it just because because I can <laughs> I like the colors and there's a little bit of that color in here so I'm gonna kind of tie it in okay like that. 
And I found some kind of cute bric-a-brac that I thought might be cute. So let's add some of that. There we go. Got that one. This one looks like, <laughs> look at that, pre-cut. <laughs> I like polka dots, I like stripes, I like buffalo check. Kind of like all the vintagey, farmhousey looking stuff. I like Victorian, I, I guess I like everything. I like beachy things too. So we'll put a little bit of this in. And these are just some solid blacks. I don't know if I'll use them or not yet. I am gonna use this a couple times back and forth just because I like the fact that it's thinner. So, there's one. And if I can untangle this, we'll put it in yet again. Keeping them the same length, similar, but not exact. Does not have to be exact. Okay, and I think, in looking at this, I think I will put a solid black one in. Just because I feel like, in looking at this, I have a lot of cream. And I want the contrast, so I'll put a little bit more black in. And I think I'm going to put one more of these brown ones in. That's all I have left, so I may as well just do it. A couple of black ones, and I'm just going back and forth. It just kind of helps me measure. We'll give this a little bit of a haircut at the end if we need to. Okay, so, and I'm just saving a little piece just in case. Um, and I'm taking a little piece of my twine to tie this all up with. So, I'm going to lay my twine out like that. And I'm just going to lay these in different patterns. There. Okay, let's do this again. And I didn't cut. So here we go. So we're going to kind of just crisscross them in random order, random colors. Lisa's behind the camera, guys. <laughs> I was getting out of view. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> Much. Okay. <laughs> so everybody say hi, Lisa. <laughs> sometimes we do our crafts together. Sometimes we, we do them separate. We each kind of have our own thing. So in this particular one, I think probably one person showing you is enough. And I'm just angling these a little bit differently to just kind of get the other, the extra colors incorporated. So I just kind of mixed it up, whatever looks kind of pleasing to my eye. I think I will put this guy in here. And I still have to work in these silly little skinny ones that I like. Put a few here. This guy over here. Oop, bird down. Good thing he didn't break his beak. This video would have been over really fast. Okay, so we're just gonna tie it in the middle. Basically, this we're just making kind of a fun tassel, tassel, whatever you say, in your neck of the woods out of this. So we're just tying it up a couple times like that. Okay, and then we're gonna Fold this in half. There we go. And hang on here. Okay. Now I have a bead that fits down in the bottom of here, and I'm just going to use it to kind of hold everything in place. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway because it's really hard to shove all the ribbons in and 
glue them. So by doing it this way, the bead will hold them in place for me instead. And then just cut off the excess. There. I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm just gonna glue this in place for a second because I don't want this not to let go once it's inside or that would not be good. So this is kind of what we're gonna be ending up with, similar, but we're not done yet. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we're not done yet. Okay, I'm just waiting for this hot glue to dry. Okay. So, put some hot glue in here. Also going to put some of this E6000 in here because I want this to dry permanently so I'm using a combination of the two okay so then I'm just going to stick that ball up there, there we go. and that's going to kind of hold my tassel in place like that and just hold it for a minute until it's nice and dry and secure and definitely use the E6000, guys, because you don't want all of this dropping out of here, especially if you give it to a gift or if you're going to be pulling on it for a, 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 you know, a pull chain or something like that. You definitely don't want to pull it and have the ball in your hand and the ribbons and have the bird still sitting up on the top. So, okay. So for all intents and purposes, I think that's pretty secure for a minute. Yeah, it seems pretty secure in there. I'm just going to reinforce it a little bit more with some hot glue. There we go. Okay. So, so we're going to just let that dry for a minute. So the next step is going to be the trim. So what we're going to do, once I have this untangled, and it needs a little bit of a haircut right here. So the next step is we are going to glue this to, to hide the clay pot is what we're trying to do here. This is just a vessel basically to, to hide all of our, our workings. So just around the top, we're just going to some hot glue on. Hopefully I can do this without burning myself. <laughs> and then just find your starting point. And see, we're just going all the way around with this. See? Pretty cute, hey? Eh? Okay. So that's what we've got so far. It seems to be on there pretty secure, I think. And again, you guys, the ribbons can be any length you want them to be. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry just for a second. I'm just gonna trim some of my ribbons here. Give them some different lengths. Cut them all on angles. They can all be short and fluffy. They can be long and dangly. It just depends what you like, where you're gonna use it, what you're gonna do with it. There's one that I didn't quite get on an angle. I like this ruler ribbon. I think it's really cute. I'm pretty sure I got all these ribbons and things at Hobby Lobby, but I would think any store, a Joanne Fabrics, any store that carries uh, upholstery things would have this too. Not Michael's, they don't do fabric there, but every other place. Okay, so the next step, guys, is we're going to glue our little bird on. So I'm going to put some E6000 on again because I want the bird to, uh, to be a permanent fixture. I actually think I'm going to put it on the... The little feet here 
bits and I know it'll definitely be touching something. And I'm gonna put some hot glue in the other places because I know it's gonna drip down and get onto the uh, to the thing here, the little clay pad here we're working with. There we go. So make sure you're right up to the um, the trim and hold it just for a second. That's why I'm using hot glue too for this so that you don't have to wait too long. We can actually finish the project in one sitting. E6000 starts, you know, it'll be tacky, but in 24 hours, you'll never get this apart. This, it's great for glass to glass or metal, wood, whatever, so. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Let's just set that there. So now we need something to hang him from. So we're going to use some twine. And I have some little beads here. Just trying to think how I want to do this. Hmm. I know I won't get this through twice. A um, little secret, guys. If if you're trying to put something that ravels through a, a small hole like a bead or something like that, because the more you push them through, the more beads you thread on, the, the more it's gonna fray. Um, just put a little bit of hot glue on the end and wait till it cools a little bit and then just kind of put it on and then start twisting it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tighten up that end. It's almost like a shoelace then, and it's gonna help you be able to thread this through without fraying. Really, it does. <laughs> really, guys. <laughs> Sometimes you have to try different beads. Sometimes the holes are not drilled correctly. There we go. It wants to go through one end and not come out the other side. Maybe we won't be putting beads on. Ah, there we go. Okay. There's one. And, oh, we're two for two. So far, so good. And I have one that I painted earlier in black. And we'll see, see if any of these are going to work. There we go. Ah, come on. It's right there. I see it. It's right there. Come on. Get along, little doggy. Okay. Almost. Almost. Well. Well. <laughs> so, how are you today? <laughs> Ah, there we go. Okay. Pretty soon I'm going to make Lisa start talking back there behind the camera. <laughs> okay. The voice of God coming yeah. at you. <laughs> I won't do too many of these because I don't want to make y'all wait. This is it's a little cray cray. Yeah, you'll find with beads, like, that's not an exact science with these holes. Some of them, see, some of them are coming through really easy, and then other ones just don't want any part of it. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now in an effort to save time. And now what I'm doing is putting, putting a big knot in the end of it to hold the beads. And then... I'm going to put a knot up here. Like so. There we go. And if I wasn't having such issue with the beads, I would probably bead some of this too, but 
don't have that kind of time. So let's just cut to the chase. Make it cute. And then the secret is gluing the knot to the bird, which definitely takes E6000, I will tell you that much. Um, just kind of find a spot right on his back here. And my neighbors are getting a little loud. They must be having a party or something. Hopefully you can't hear that. And then I'm also going to put a little hot glue on. For one, I don't want the, uh, the thing to unravel. And for two, just so it'll stick a little bit faster. Okay. We'll see if this works. This is like the probably the longest part of this whole thing. And don't worry if you see a little bit of glue, we're gonna hide that with that last little piece of ribbon that I saved. I know, it's like watching paint dry, isn't it? This is the worst part. The E6000 glue, um, which is, you kind of see it around the knot oozing out, is not going to um, be dry before this video is over. Um, like I said, it'll take about 24 hours, but the, um, I'm hoping that the glue gun will hold it. So I'm just going to set this down. Hopefully without breaking it, I can manage that. This little piece of ribbon that I have. I'm going to go around bottom of the knot, make a cute little bow. To hide, basically this is to hide our glue and hide our knot and all that fun little stuff. There we go. Okay, so this is not I'm going to just hold this for a second until the glue dries and then I will hold it up and show you it all together. Okay guys, so my glue is dried now. Um, the one thing I will tell you is glue a little bit. If you do a bird like I'm doing, uh, make sure your weight is balanced. You want to glue a little bit closer to the, to the neck so that he hangs correctly. If you're farther down on the body, he'll probably be front heavy. So, and you can trim the, the ribbons, the tassel, as much or as little as you want. If you like the whimsy, the kind of the Mackenzie Childs look of it, you can leave it long. If you want it shorter, you can definitely do it shorter. You can add more ribbons up until that, that little uh, uh, ceramic pot is full. You can put as many or as few in as you want. You can trim them all the same if that bothers you or leave them, you know, a little different. But basically, this is it. All done. And like I said, if you can hang it from a cute little, you know, piece of driftwood if you wanted and, you know, make a decoration like that or hang it from a, as a finial from a ceiling fan, lampshade, a suction cup, hang it in your, your window, whatever you choose to do with it. But just a fun little fun craft. And again, you can make this for any season. This could be a pumpkin, a scarecrow, a little snowman, um, any little Thing will do but kind of just taking the tassel and the little um, ball bead garlands to the next level so I hope you enjoyed this video please send me pictures of what you make I'd like to see how yours turn out and be sure to like us and follow us and please please share our videos and we will put links to all of these supplies um, on the page so until we see you next time and see which craft we're gonna do have a good day bye